Hello, okay, it works. Okay. I had my sound muted. Okay. Well, I'm glad it's working. You bet I'll see you next time. <laughs> see you next time. Good morning, everybody. This is Cruise Man. Out on the uh, 2018 Goldwing, just leaving uh, breakfast. Uh, Don Smith and I were just testing out the Apple CarPlay phone call feature. I had never tried uh, receiving or sending a phone call through CarPlay, and we were just testing it out. And I was wondering why he would call me and I couldn't hear him. And it's because I had my uh, audio muted on the Goldwing because I didn't want the radio from the headset going on in my head while I was talking to you guys through the GoPro. And of course that muted all of the audio. And now he's trying to get out here in traffic. I want to welcome all of you and he's heading back to his place. I want to welcome all of you to Cruise Man's Garage Motovlog. You know, I haven't been doing a lot of motovlogs lately because, uh, partially because I've been really, really busy helping uh, Ricky get her mom placed into a uh, memory care facility. It's been quite an ordeal. And so that has uh, taken up uh, some time, which, uh, you know, when you do these motor vlogs, there's, it's not just the time it takes to shoot the video, but you've got to edit, do a lot of other things. So hopefully my time is going to be uh, freed up here a little bit in the future, and I'll be able to do maybe a weekly motor vlog. Um, since we're on the subject of CarPlay, you know, I recently did a video on how to get CarPlay set up on the Goldwing and how to use CarPlay. And it's not, uh, I'm not going to say it's not intuitive, but it's certainly not as uh, seamless and easy as it should be, partially because you have to plug your phone into the Goldwing and you have to do everything in a certain sequence to get it to work. And even if you do everything in that certain sequence, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. And most of my issues getting all of these things to work revolves around problems with Bluetooth. Um, these Bluetooth headsets and maybe it's the Bluetooth on the Goldwing itself. I don't know where the, uh, the actual problem lies. But whether it's the Cena or the Cardo, and I have both. I have the Cardo, I have the Cena, Pack Talk Bold, and the Cena 50S, and the 50R. Uh, my headsets just do not connect reliably with the Goldwing. Um, on the Cena 50S, for example, it seems like I have to go through the connection process twice and sometimes three times. Now what happens is the motorcycle is running and I will turn on the Cena and it will I will get the message in the helmet that the headset is connected and I will see the icon on the Goldwing showing that the headset's connected but I'm not getting any audio through the headset. And if you've had that problem, put it in the comments down below. I'd like to know if some of you other uh, riders out there are having a similar problem. And I do have this same problem come up from time to time with the Cardo. It doesn't seem to be as um, consistently a problem with the Cardo, but I do have the same problem. So what I have to do is turn off the Cena and then recycle, turn it back on, and usually the second time it will connect and I'll get audio through the helmet. So when it comes to Apple CarPlay, 
until you're actually getting uh, audio through your headset, it will not, CarPlay will not work. It will not come up on the screen. It will not recognize your phone. You can't, even if you get the message that the headset's connected and you see the icon on the screen that the headset's connected, that's not good enough. You have to be getting audio through the headset for it to work. And I want to know if some of you are having that same problem. And I'm sure it's the same issue with Android Auto. I only used Android Auto a couple of times uh, when I had an Android phone. And because it, it was it was so painful to get it to work I just uh, I just kind of gave up but once I got the new iPhone I felt like CarPlay has better features it has more functionality I never could figure out how to text with the Android Auto uh, it's very easy to do with CarPlay you basically press the voice control button until Siri comes up and then uh, you just say I you know text send a text message to and the name of the person you want to send the text to and then you you talk and tell Siri what you want to say and she does her best to interpret what you're saying and puts it into text form and sends the text so it's very easy you can even use WhatsApp in CarPlay uh, you press the voice control button you get Siri to come up and you say send a WhatsApp message to Joe or whoever it is in your contact list and it works very easy once you get CarPlay working on the Goldwing or in your car for that matter it really works pretty well uh, I can bring up Siri and say hey take me home and it will bring up the uh, Apple map program and calculate the directions and start routing me back to the house or to whatever address I give it. I could say take me to the nearest Starbucks and it would do that. It, it really is a very robust uh, system once you get it connected. So the problem lies two, twofold. Number one, you have to plug the phone into the motorcycle to get it to use CarPlay. It should be a Bluetooth connection to CarPlay. I already have the phone connected to the motorcycle with Bluetooth. So it should be able to recognize that and just use CarPlay through Bluetooth. And that technology does exist. There are cars out there right now that use CarPlay through Bluetooth and where you don't have to plug them in. And that's the way it should work. Why the hell are we dealing with wires in 2021? And honestly, there's just not that much room in this glove box uh, to be plugging in a phone, especially these new larger phones. There's barely room for them to fit in there anyway. And by the time you have a USB cable and everything else, it's just not convenient. So one of the uh, features that I would recommend Honda come out with in, the, in a future model is to uh, allow CarPlay to work through, and Android Auto for that matter, to work through Bluetooth rather than having to have this physical connection to the motorcycle. It just doesn't seem necessary. And I suspect that uh, should they continue to enhance the Goldwing feature set, uh, that's something that people would need to request. We need to start letting Honda know that's something we want. You know, enough, enough people complained about the small trunk on the 2018 to 2020 Goldwing that Honda actually redesigned and put a larger trunk on the 2021. And that's pretty amazing for a company, after for Honda especially, after only three years of production, to go through the design and the tooling and the setup to redesign that trunk. I'm stunned that Honda did it. And I'm pleasantly stunned. I'm glad they did it. I think it's uh, uh, a good thing that Honda did. And I think that they listened to their customers and there must have been enough people complaining about that trunk that Honda saw the writing on the wall and decided to uh, invest the money to do that.
so kudos to Honda now one thing I wish Honda did have is I wish they would make the trunk kit available unpainted so that anybody who has a 2018 to 2020 Goldwing that wants that larger trunk could purchase that trunk kit, take it to a local painter and have the paint matched to fit their Goldwing. That would save Honda the money of having to inventory all the different SKUs for painted trunks for earlier model Goldwings. Just sell it unpainted. Now, I don't know if Honda would ever do that. I doubt it because I'm sure they probably figure the larger trunk is your incentive to buy a brand new Goldwing. They don't want, you know, they don't want to offer the larger trunk. That's the whole point of them coming out with that so that you would trade in your 2018 or 2019 and get the bigger trunk and the new Goldwing. But, you know, a, a boy can dream, right? So what do you think? If Honda made available the larger trunk kit for the 2018 to 2020 model Goldwing, unpainted, you'd still have to pay to have a painter paint it. That might cost you another, I don't know, six, seven, eight hundred dollars. Who knows? But let's say they offered that trunk for a thousand dollars. Would you pay a thousand dollars plus the cost of painting? To have the larger trunk on your Goldwing. I'm just curious. I don't even know how much the trunk kit is. It might be more than a thousand dollars. I haven't actually looked it up, so I don't know what it costs for a bagger Goldwing to get the trunk added to the to the uh, to the bagger model. Maybe somebody knows that answer can put it in the comments down below. But it says a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars. Would you pay that money? To have the larger trunk on your 2018 to 2020 Goldwing. Just curious to know the answer to that. So anyway, as you can see, I have CarPlay up right now. Uh, somebody has sent me a text message. I uh, have my sound muted for the headset, so I don't, uh, like I said before, I could have muted it on the headset, and I probably should have. But I will uh, find out what that text message is here in a minute. And uh, overall, I'm very happy with CarPlay. I don't use it every time I get on the Goldwing just because it is such a hassle to connect everything up in a certain order. Uh, but I certainly, if I'm on a longer uh, trip, a longer ride, I'll be going to West Texas here in a few weeks. Uh, I'll, I will hook it up and use it. I have not figured out how to get the music app to work yet to play music. I'm going to tackle that problem this week, see if I can figure that out. If you want more videos specifically on how to use CarPlay, put it in the comments down below. Maybe you want me to make a video on all the different apps and how you use them. If not, just let me know. You probably already know how to use them anyway. But if you want more of those type of technical uh, how-to videos, uh, let me know and I will uh, add that to the list of videos that I'm working on. A lot of people posted a lot of comments when I mentioned in my last Moto Vlog that I had been fully vaccinated with the Pfizer vaccine. Some of you said you weren't going to get the vaccine. Uh, some of you said you'd already had the vaccine. And some of you said you'd had some really bad reactions to the vaccine. And I had some reaction. I, my left arm, the first vaccine shot I got, I got in my left arm. I got the Pfizer vaccine. And my left arm was so sore for about three or four days, I could barely raise my, my arm up. Uh, that was about the only side effect I had. And then it, you know, finally went away, subsided. And my second shot, however, I had in the right arm. And I did get some soreness in my arm for a couple of days. Not as bad as the first shot, surprisingly. But on the second shot, I ended up with a lot of fatigue. I was uh, really tired for two or three days. I mean, it I didn't get a... F I wouldn't say I had a fever, but I was warmer than I normally am. I'm normally at about 97.8, and I think my, my temperature got up to about 98.3, so still, you know, not, not what you'd call a fever, but warmer than usual, and uh, a mild headache maybe, and, uh, you know, 
just kind of tired, you know, just kind of sleepy. Uh, but now I think after it's been a week, uh, I think I'm fine. I think I'm pretty much back to normal, which is nothing to write home about. But anyway, thank you for joining me today on Cruise Man's Garage. I will see you on the next Cruise Man's Motor Vlogs. Play text messages. I just pulled in my garage and I'm texting you back from my bike. See you next time. <laughs>